welcome to my latest experiment. This is the big one, the one I've been waiting for all my life. What is it? Try to imagine all life as you know it stopping instantaneously and every molecule in your body exploding at the speed of light. Oh my God. The queen will rise to the top. Oh yeah. And I am the voice of the voiceless. And there is no one that does it better. The Guy and Harley podcast. Streaming all over your face. Perhaps that was the most important part. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Pigville on the internet. I'm an asshole because the sun is shining, but I'm not smiling. I know I'm often told that there's a pot of gold, but I don't see no fucking rainbow and my coffee's cold. I know I should be grateful, I know I'm young and able, but I don't have the strength to get up from the kitchen table. I'm Harley Neville, welcome along to the Guy and Harley podcast. And I'm Guy Pigton. Um, About to cut your wrists. Yeah, I thought that was good actually, I have that feeling quite often, (laughs) I really relate to what that guy was saying, I get pissed off when my coffee's cold. I'm I'm relatively young and able, yep. and yet still grumpy. Don't want to go outside when the sun is shining. <laughs> Definitely don't want to go outside. Got to stay in and edit. Um, and I'm not smiling uh, about that. <laughs> so yeah, it was, it was pretty good. Good. Well, that is uh, that's my main man Watsky, the uh, poet turned rapper. So look him up if you haven't heard of him yet. Right. Um, well, you know, you said your name was Harley Neville, but <laughs> recently. <laughs> You uh, had your your name like so. We both keep often get our names wrong. People get our names wrong probably mm, over fifty percent of the time. Well, because Harley and Guy are just too complicated to remember. Well, they seem fictional. They don't seem real <laughs> for some reason. Um, so you know, there's no way he could be called Harley. So his name must be Harvey. Yeah. There's there's no 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 way he could could be called Guy. So he must be called Gary. Yeah, or grey. I feel like you get it a lot more than I do. Like yeah. I get it. I definitely get it. Harry and ha- Harvey and so on. Or Haley. <laughs> that's the. That's a fucking weird one. Haley. I'm a man. Like, how many men do you know called Haley? Not many. Not many. <laughs> like, there's Haley's comet. That's named after a man, but I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure that's his last name. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's weird and annoying. Uh, of course, we it recalled is. the uh, the most classic faux pas being uh, at the Writers Guild Awards where they got my name wrong and I lost, mm. uh, which I am harboring deep, deep resentment over. Yeah. And in fact, if I ever get nominated for that award again, I'm going to write a grumpy email being like, well, yeah, I'll come along, but I'm not paying this time. And also, <laughs> I'm not fucking, if you guys get my name wrong, I'm going to be seriously pissed off. Well, not just that. You should also write into your little thank you speech. Yeah. Something about it. Yeah. You've got to work that in there. Fucking dipshit, big <laughs> shot, fucking writer directors, fucking fucking chuckles up the front laughing away getting my name wrong. Yeah. Fucking work it out. You're the MC. You're getting paid for this shit. Well, not just the MC, but also the person that made the graphics up the back. It was like on the big screen, your name wrong. Oh, yeah. Ridiculous. Yeah, Twice. Yeah. yeah. Two different categories, and all of them was, um, what was it? Just, what was P- it? P- was it spelt pigeon? P-I-D. Yeah, and they said pigeon. They were like, yeah. guy pigeon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes, well, anyway, I had a similar experience recently. Uh, and this, uh, I, I got a script for the, for the ad that I've been cast in. Mm-hmm. And uh, it had on it a watermark, you know, like so that for anti-piracy reasons, you know, for yeah. anti- to, so that we know who leaked it if I give it away or something like that. Yeah. And so it had emblazoned this qu- quite noticeable watermark across it. Harvey Melville. <laughs> Oh, Harley Mel- that that is easily the biggest perversion of my name I have ever encountered. Harvey Melville. Yeah. You've got to change quite a lot of like, yeah, yeah. you know, characters for that to work. Yeah. Like Harley Neville, Harley Harvey Melville. Uh, yeah. Like they're just adding all sorts of crap in there. Yeah. Uh, Harvey Melville and Gary Pigeon. <laughs> TV stars. TV stars. And, like, I didn't even realize. I thought that it must be the author or something like that. It was so far away from my name that I didn't realize it was a copyright thing. I thought they had put the author's, um, like, watermark over the whole script. Yeah. And I did not know that it was actually meant to say Harley Neville. Well, it would be funny if Harvey Melville pops up on IMDb after yeah. doing this. Well, it probably fucking will. <laughs> Along with Harry Neville on iTunes. <laughs> 
That still pisses me off. It's still there. If you go to iTunes right now and search I Survived a Zombie Holocaust, uh, dear listener, you will be able to see, see the lead, Harry Neville. The lead of the film, Harry Neville. And I, and I have asked the producer to sort it out. But have you thought about writing into iTunes directly? Mm, well, uh, no, I don't think I really bothered with that. Yeah. The big evil empire, you know. Well, it is, but I would, I would try that. It would be worth just seeing what happens. Will you get a response? Will mm. it be met with silence? Yeah. You know, like... Because I'd be like, hey, by the way, um, I'm the lead actor of this film. My name's Harley Neville. Uh, you call me Harry Neville in the credits, which is um, completely incorrect. Uh, check IMDb. Check a bunch of things. Mm. Look, here's my Facebook. Here's everything. I'm clearly this person. Mm. Can you please fucking change it? This is embarrassing. Mm. My mum goes on here. Yeah. <laughs> My mum has to explain it to, to her friends when they download it on iTunes. Because all your mum's friends uh, are downloading iTunes. Yeah, are watching movies on iTunes. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of iTunes, I was going to watch a film on iTunes tonight. I was going to watch a film called How to Save Us, which yep. is uh, an indie film directed by a chap by the name of Jason Trost. 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 And uh, produced by a chap called David Helmore. Yep. And um, that might not be his last name, eh? Well, we don't know, but it's a good last name. It's a good last name. It's a, it's a, if you've changed your name to that, I give you credit. Mm. That's a cool name. So uh, I was going to watch that today on iTunes. I uh, got the link and everything. Turns out not available in my region. The old classic. The old classic um, piracy endorsing not available in my region yeah. nonsense. Well, which means basically it's left me no option but to... But to do it. Yeah, because but what's going to happen is I'm going to Sydney on next Friday, the 18th. Mm. I'm going to Sydney for this uh, commercial. And while I'm there, I'm going to meet up with uh, Mr. Helmore. Mm. Um, and I wanted to watch the film before I went. Yeah. Uh, out of respect. Of course. And what, what else could you do? Yeah. And then, I mean, there's a the problem, like, because you have to understand that, you know, it makes sense that it can't be released all at once everywhere. You know, that makes sense because, you know, we have different countries releasing this film, you know, so we're not hanging out with the Russians, right? Mm. So that just can't happen. But when you have a iTunes conglomerate, which is worldwide, you do feel like in the places that iTunes is available, it could be made universally available. Yeah, well, surely you flick a fucking switch, right? And, well, and de- like- yeah, iTunes do. They flick a switch off to yeah. stop it, Yeah. Uh, in fact. So I do agree that that is a frustrating thing for all people involved because it means that, you know, more people pirate your stuff and it's, you know, just frustrating. It's just, it's almost like in it, it's saying fuck you to the honest people. Mm. It's like, look, go and suck a dick. The only thing that you can do now is pirate. And that's how little we care about this title. Mm. Um, so it is, it is quite frustrating. Yeah, well... Um uh, if you are in one of the regions where you can see How to Save Us, go and, go and watch it on iTunes. Go check it out. Look it up. Yeah. <laughs> Let me know how it is. It's pretty cool. Yeah. It's got a power glove in it, a Nintendo power glove. Nice. Uh, old school. Old mm. school reference. What have you got today? Uh, well, um, I, well, I did want to say I'm going to be partying with Mr. Helmore, apparently. All right. Um, By the pool. He's got a pool, yeah. So yeah. I'm going to be gallivanting around Sydney by the pool and uh, I do not intend to manscape big shot producers often do have pools they do yeah so I'm going to be lounging by his pool at full hairy power pools or convertibles Mm. Uh, so if you ever go out for like a producer wants to take you you know out for lunch or out to dinner and you either get in a convertible or go by their poolside you know they're probably a legit producer. They're probably big deals. Yeah. 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 We, we have neither convertibles nor pool sides. No. <laughs> <laughs> just, just for the record. Um, yeah, so I had uh, another audition the other day uh-huh. for um, a, a big TV show. Maybe one of the biggest auditions I've ever had. Yeah, this is funny. Can we say? Yeah, we can say we, what the... Cr- I don't think we can say what it is. We can't say what uh, it is? No, I don't think we can say what it is. Right, well... Because I don't know if they've announced the second season necessarily. Uh, you know, like, okay, that, okay, might, be, that okay. might be a scoop. Well, can we give some clues and they can follow the breadcrumbs, maybe? Well, yeah. Okay, it was a big shot. It was a big, big TV show uh, that was shot uh, in part in Queenstown. And it was ran by a very successful uh, 
director, female director, um, who may have done a film with a piano in it. (laughs) (laughs) Come on, man. (laughs) Hey, look, put put it all together. You'll figure it out. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, And you were like, oh, yeah, like I've got this audition for this thing. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. And you're like, yeah, it's just this, uh, you know, this, 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 the like, super you, famous. I, I was like, "Have you ever heard of the show?" And I was like, "You mean the show from this director of this, you know, Oscar-winning director? You know, blah blah blah." And, and you were like, "Uh, yeah, I guess, yeah, so. I guess that's the one." <laughs> I was like, "You idiot! <laughs> your biggest audition of your life. You didn't even know it was anything." Yeah, well, good. But <laughs> just, I, I walked in with an air of nonchalance. And what did you play? You you played a pervert, right? I'm not a pervert. I played a um, a naive and sensitive uh, soul who has fallen in love with a lady of the night. Right. Um, and yeah, that that was it. It yeah. went all right. It was not a bad audition, um, but not exceptional. Not like mm. didn't didn't feel like the casting agent was like, "Fuck yeah, that's the guy." Mm. Felt like I was one of the you know the the many in the middle. You know, you remember the really shit ones and the really good ones, and then in the in between, you have all the people sort of all the mediocre or just. You know, mid-tier people. I feel like I I did a mid-tier performance, right? Um, but time will tell. You know. Well, you just have to um, you just have to let that go on set of the ad that you're being flown to Sydney for. Yeah. Um, as you count your ten thousand dollars or yeah. however much it is. Yeah, ten G's. My, but you got to you got to remember that there's um, really commission. S- that's six. Yeah, it's right? seven. It'll be seven because it'll, be it'll be two thousand goes to the tax man. Mm-hmm. So it's twenty percent to the tax man. Ten percent goes to my agent. So that leaves me seven G's ish. Right. Um, but I got my flights and my uh, hotel, and they're putting me up in a swanky place. Yeah, like at more than a thousand bucks worth of hotel. Yeah, um, yeah. and close to that in flights as well. When was the last ad you got? When was Jeff the Snake? Was it this uh, year? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't it wasn't that long ago. It was um, it was the morning after the zombie film premiered. Remember? So it was May twenty third. Right. That we, the one that we shot it, and it came out sometime. That's after pretty that. good. Two big ads in a year. It's, yeah, it's pretty good. Well, even the New World one was the beginning of 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 I think the beginning of last year. Right. So in the two year period, three ads. Not bad. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, a friend of ours, Mike Edward, who was in I Survived a Zombie Holocaust, you might know him as Adam the Body from that. He's also... Or in the, more, more likely as Zach from Shortland Short, Street. The Zach, rapist. Zach the Rapist from Shortland you Street. You may know him as Zach the Rapist from Shortland Street. Or, or some guy from Ash vs. Evil Dead, which I haven't watched yet. Uh, the, he, he has like a sort of... Uh, he's in the very beginning of Ash vs. Evil Dead. He also plays... What is the guy's name? He's got the, but he's like the horse cock guy in Spartacus. Yeah, like, is that his name? No, horse cock? he's got a name like Xerxes or oh, fucking okay. something, something with a Z or an X or right. something. But, so, I, but I haven't seen it. He's in Spartacus. He gets uh, his dick. He gets crucified and get his and gets his massive wang chopped off as punishment for having such a massive wang. Yeah. and making all the other Romans feel insecure. Mm. <laughs> mm. So let that be a lesson. Mm. <laughs> then we quickly rectified the the rumors um, about the size because that was obviously a character that was a, a character's wang, you know, yeah. and it was a prosthetic wang. Yeah. And you know, I'm sure that a lot of people were saying, "Oh, well, he must have a huge one." Well, we quickly rectified that by giving him a small one, <laughs> smallish one in Zombie Holocaust, a small prosthetic one. Well, it, it wasn't was small. It small. See, to me, it was like I was like, "Yeah, that's, a, that's a I was, penis." I was, I, was, I was like, "That." I was like, "That was based off my penis." Yeah, well, <laughs> like what? What was wrong with that? That was molded on my penis. <laughs> no, because um, uh, I remember um, Mike <laughs> was like, he was like, oh, like I, I think really, it, but he didn't. T- no, it wasn't. He didn't tell me directly. The makeup girls or someone in the in that department was like saying that Mike was uh, a little unimpressed by the size of the, really? of the zombie dick that he had to pull out. Look, you know, man, he wanted to be packing yeah, packing yeah. heat. You know, hey, that that was nothing to be shrugged at. <laughs> Well, especially because it was it was a flaccid, exactly, penis, you know. Exactly. We all know that flaccid penises have no you know relevance to the size of the erect penis, but guys. That's, that's true, but also it wasn't like really small. So mm. really, 
Look, some people are just gifted. Yeah. Some people are genetically gifted. Well, I think the indication, the implication is, is definitely is his one, one is people. bigger yeah. in real life than, yeah. than the prosthetic we gave him. Yeah. And he was like, what the fuck is this? What the fuck is this bullshit? Whereas in our case, we were like, hey, this is pretty good. <laughs> hey, this is cool. <laughs> this is cool. <laughs> this is what it's like to have a big one. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. Um, but he sort of mentioned that he sort of had gotten used to being in ads like booking a couple of ads per year and he was booking these ads like with such regularity that he sort of came to sort of rely on them and so it was like yeah yeah well i'm gonna book this much amount of money through ads every year so you know that's kind of my main source of income uh and i can just kind of chill and then he sort of had a year where he didn't book any ads and another year and another year and he was like oh fuck Actually, you can't rely on these ads any time, you know. Mm. And and that's the thing is like, you know. Well, I remember that conversation. He said it was when he hit 40, I think. It was think, it when I he got he, old. I think he said that, you know, basically he was getting all these roles as like this, you know, buff young dude. And yeah. then he hit 40. And then suddenly a lot of them dried up. Yeah. Although his career seems to still be going from strength to strength as far as I can see because he's doing all these TV shows. Yeah. Per- Filthy Rich. Yeah, he's in Filthy Rich with another friend of ours. Jay uh, Simon. Jay Simon. So they're both in Filthy w- Rich, so I'll probably make an effort to watch some of that. Mm. Um, but, uh, yeah, so you can, you can never rely on ads. And when anyone goes, oh, yeah, 10 grand, that's pretty sweet. You must be living a pretty sweet life. It's like, well, yeah, you'd be living a sweet life if you did five of them a, in, a, in a year. Yeah. Uh, but if you do one every, you know, couple of years, maybe, <laughs> yeah. or one or two, then no, you're not living sweet. Yeah. And also this money, this big water money that I'm getting, uh, A, we just blew a chunk of it on a PlayStation 4. Yeah, <laughs> boy. And three games. Yep. Uh, splash out, Pigville Christmas present. P- like on Angie's birthday, your girlfriend Angie, yeah. um, I bring home this massive present for Pigville. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and I delay the, the birthday celebrations yeah, because we're I'm waiting. Out, I'm purchasing the PlayStation yeah. and working out which one do we do? We want the 500 gig? Do we want the, the one terabyte? terabyte? Yeah. Which games do we want? Are we yeah. going to get it with um, uh, Star Wars Battlefront or are we going to get it with Drake, uh, the Drake collection, uh, yeah. Uncharted? Um, and so we were holding up her birthday to bring back a massive birthday present that was for us. And not just that, <laughs> I spent a lot more money on that PlayStation that day than I spent on <laughs> on her presents. Well, look, that's only fair. That's only fair. Every now and then you got to treat yourself. Yeah. Well, it's true. We're like, I don't buy many, my, uh, no. many things, you know, I'm not a big purchaser of things really. Uh, yeah. so, you know, every now and then you got to splash out. But anyway, so that's a chunk of that money gone, mm. but then, uh, far more boring than that is i've got a tooth issue yeah which is uh getting worse um and i've got to i'm gonna to have to have a tooth removed and they quoted me six grand to get it removed and put like a, a fake one back in yeah. a denture or whatever it is back in yeah um so basically that's the responsible thing that i'm probably going to do with the money mm. fix this friggin' tooth and they didn't they also say like weren't they also like uh it, it'll be cost six grand probably it might cost a bit more. No, no, I think he said no. He said about six grand, but he did say it wasn't a, an exact science. It depends on complications and. and he goes, "This is not an exact science. I need to decide what type of car I'm buying this year." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's what he's saying. <laughs> yeah, the, the dentist. Yeah. yeah, the dentist. I'm deciding if I go to Barbados <laughs> or just Fiji. And how many weeks am I taking here? Is this a five week sort of thing, or do I really want half a year? Should I take the whole family or just the mistress? <laughs> <laughs> Dentists get paid a lot. They That's do. what we're saying. Well, well, because I paid six hundred and fifty-five, uh, six hundred and fifty bucks for fucking forty-five minutes of his time the other week. Yeah, uh, that's what I'm. I'm very Cunt. thankful that the, I don't have any current issues with my teeth, and that I just got them checked out because I don't have any of this. Uh, mm. I don't have six hundred and fifty dollars, and I definitely don't have uh, six grand. Well, I tell you something that's a little concerning to me mm. is that. So I went in for this like check, sort of uh, basically the the. In endodontist, which is the guy who knows about the inside of teeth, mm-hmm. that's one that cost me six fifty. He drilled in there to see if he could fix this tooth, yep. and six hundred and fifty bucks. And forty five minutes later, he came to the conclusion that he couldn't fix it and it was going to have to be removed. Forty five minutes of agony, or was it fine? Ah, uh, it was all right. It was all right. It was not particularly pleasant. I was being uh, well looked after by the dental nurse. All right, uh, excellent job there. Uh, at the endodontist down in Britomart, I can't remember the name of. <laughs> Not going to go for the cheap option. Not going to say anything. 
sexually. <laughs> <laughs> um, sex is, moving right along. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and so, so yeah, they um, they drilled out my tooth right, and they they said you can't fix it. So he put in like a temporary filling, basically saying until I get the whole tooth pu- pulled out. But when he did that, when he did that, he actually solved the original problem, which was I, was, I had this like cyst above the tooth yeah. right that was why i went in there and so him drilling it out and cleaning it up actually got rid of the problem mm-hmm. um and so now i'm stuck with this temporary filling in a tooth that needs to be removed and um it's starting to kind of come apart the filling mm-hmm. you know and i'm thinking shit i'm going to sydney in a week uh and i really don't want to be having any tooth issues no. you know this time next week yeah uh when i'm supposed to be you know wrapping or uh, you know wrapping away on an ad that's true that's yeah. true so i'm a little concerned about that but on the upside, the um, the the nerve is all gone. I had a root canal ages ago, yeah. so the nerve is gone, so it doesn't hurt. Right. So if it all falls apart and turns into a jagged uh, bone in my mouth, Ooh. I won't feel it. It'll be fine. <laughs> I'll just have to uh, pop heaps of painkillers. Yeah. Well, we were talking about making money. I actually did make a little bit of money recently because we, both of us, but me more than you, got paid our first sort of. I guess what you would, what you might say dividend, not really a dividend, royalty, royalty from I Survived the Zombie Holocaust. So this was actually a really big deal to me. Uh, one, because I'm perpetually broke and have no money ever. And so, you know, to get a big chunk of money is uh, nice. <laughs> um, two, it was the first time that a film had given something back after taking so much yeah um you know like most of the time uh you know basically movies just cost us silly amounts of money mm. at all times and and to be honest this one even getting that money back has not even come close to what we spent on it well you're gonna tell them how much you got on there yeah secret. yeah sure i got uh just three and a half grand basically yeah. so so it was five years work <laughs> yeah look, and if you, and, and if an investment of how many thousands of your own dollars ten thousand yeah more? probably ten thousand yeah yeah so 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 that's good <laughs> no get into filmmaking kids if you're listening get into filmmaking so the, so the mass is not great but you know of course the the great thing about it is like you know that money's already spent this money coming in is just straight up money coming in mm. and you know it probably won't be the last time the film gives us uh, some money so that's that's cool but it, it also just made me feel for instance for a second like a real filmmaker yeah <laughs> like a real director who gets paid for his time and 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 also you know you know everyone talks about you know what did they spend their first paycheck on because that's kind of, i kind of consider that my first director's paycheck even though i got paid for the zombie film i put all that back into the zombie film mm. um so this is actually like legitimately getting paid i have been paid for writing before which was nice um so you know we got a playstation we went halves on a playstation and i got some more camera gear basically is what i've spent that money on mm. pretty much all gone yeah well <laughs> let, let me tell you about my earnings from the zombie film the guy has a lot more yep. percentage points than me yeah i own two percent of the film and i own 17 and a half percent so that's quite a quite a discrepancy <laughs> when you consider that we're both investing 50 50 in most of those expenses yep. not all of them there's some that you covered uh the reshoots you covered the reshoots yep. but you know a lot of those i i've certainly invested uh approximately 50 50 um and then uh, my two percent, I got paid as well. Yep, four hundred and fifty dollars. Ooh yeah, four hundred and fifty dollars. Five years later, four fifty big ones, and you know somewhere between five and ten grand invested myself. Yep, um, and a lot of time and effort. Yep, I'm still kind of working on it. Um, sure, and four hundred and fifty bucks. <laughs> I, for me, it was a depressing moment because I knew that moment was coming one day. I didn't mm. know that eventually some money was going to come and it was I was never going to recoup my costs. Yeah. But I just I just when it, when it finally came and the first payment, which is presumably the biggest payment, could be the biggest, probably going to be the biggest probably. payment we get. It's going to be the law of diminishing returns, and the biggest payment I got was four hundred and fifty bucks. <laughs> that that was that was the grand total, the sum total of of yes. five years' work. You know. Yep. 
<laughs> and so for me, it, it was a little upsetting. Yeah, well, for me, you know, because this is, I mean, it's a, it is a bit like childbirth, you know. You know, someone has a kid, they go, it's horrible, I'm never going to do it again. The pain was unbearable. My vagina looks like an abomination, <laughs> um, you know, and this is the worst thing that, that's ever happened. And then sort of, a, sort of a year down the track, they go, you know what? Let's have another kid. Mm. Let's do that all over again. I want little Billy to have a brother to play uh, yeah, with. It's mental. You, girls are mental. Mm. But on the same token, it's kind of like this thing where, you know, you go through this horrific ordeal with making the film. And, uh, you know, like there's hundreds of hours and staying up, you know, 40 hours straight or three days straight and just fighting and battling to try and make something good. And then kind of... At a certain point, you you block a lot of that out and you kind of try as best you can to forget how much misery and time and pain you put into it. And then you get a little payment and then you go, oh, sweet. Hmm. (laughs) You go, oh, that that was, oh, cool. That's good. That that was worth it. I, I can't remember that. Uh, That stuff I did for five years. It's a bit (laughs) of a haze. I I think it was worth it. I, 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 yeah, yeah, no, that's nice. Hmm. So, um, got that, and, uh, yeah, what what else? What else, me? Yeah. Well, uh, I want to talk about our homie, uh, Neam Hegarty, long-time listener. Um, Fan of the show. Big supporter. Watch the film. often clicks like on things. Yep. He watched, He bought and watched the film, I Survived a Zombie Holocaust. Took him a while, but he did it. Took him a while, but he got there. Um, and so he is in a band called Laura Palmer. Yep. And they have just released a new song, which is called... Uh, Forgotten Songs. Forgotten Songs from their EP... Old Souls. Old Souls, or LP, or EP. I don't really know what an EP is. EP has got less songs on it. Right. Well, I'm not sure which one it is, if it's an EP or an LP. But either way, it's available on Bandcamp. So look up Laura Palmer, and they've got this new song, Forgotten Songs. And uh, we'll play a little bit for that, a little bit of that for you uh, at the end of the show. Yeah. So so get Thanks it. It's a, it's a free download, or it's a yep. you know you can it's Koha, so you can give them a give them a few bucks if you want, or you can just download it like I did. If you, <laughs> if you like if you like your punk music, mm. get into that. Um, all right. Well, look, this is a, a filmmaking podcast. It's a podcast about our lives. So of course we've got to talk about some films. I've seen some films, and the first film that I've seen, which I loved, which I thought was amazing, was Creed. Do you know anything about Creed? Yeah, yeah, cool. The great band. No, terrible band. <laughs> <laughs> Never associate the two. <laughs> Uh, no, Creed is uh, essentially what you'd call a Rocky spin-off or a Rocky reboot. Right. Which sounds like fucking shit. terrible. It sounds like the worst idea ever. F- for starters, you go, look, there were six of those. <laughs> Rockies or, or uh, five of those. Uh, I was thinking of the Rocky Horror Picture Show. No, Rocky, <laughs> Rocky Balboa, the, the boxer. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know, there was already... Uh, Rockies two through to six, mm. right? So you know, do we need another fucking Rocky right now? <laughs> you know, yeah. <laughs> but actually, essentially, it is fucking awesome, and it is the best Rocky sequel since the original Rocky. You know, mm. and it just kicks ass, and basically, it follows uh, Apollo Creed's son. Now, you know, for Rocky enthusiasts, you will know that Apollo Creed was the champ who in Rocky one. He was uh, killed by my main man. No, <laughs> he wasn't killed by your main man. He was killed by my main man. No, so in Rocky 1, Rocky was given a shot uh, against uh, Apollo Creed, I think not for the title, and he lost. In Rocky 2, he was given a rematch for the title, which he won. In Rocky 3, uh, Apollo Creed trained Rocky to fight Mr. T, a.k.a. Clubber Lang. And then in Rocky IV, spoiler alert, guys, Apollo Creed is killed by the Russian guy. I can't remember the Russian guy's name, but he was killed by the Russian guy. And then Rocky... What's um, the name of the actor? Uh, Dolph Lundgren, yeah. your mate Dolph Lundgren. My mate Dolph. Uh, Masters of the Universe. <laughs> He-Man. He-Man. Um, but he's killed by Dolph Lundgren. And then Rocky has to avenge America and his mate Apollo Creed... Uh, by beating the Russian. So that happened in Rocky IV, right? Now this follows Apollo Creed's illegitimate son, Adonis, 
Good name. He just mm. calls himself Donnie most of the time. Mm. Smartly. Because you can't walk around calling yourself a Donis. Mm. Um, and basically, he wants to get into fighting like his old man. He's come from this very privileged life because his fucking dad's made all this cake. And, you know, but he's still really just wants to be a boxer. And so he eventually manages to recruit Rocky to help train him. And so Rocky becomes like Mick and the first Rocky mm. as the old beat up mentor. Mm. Uh, and, you know, I'd heard that there's been some good reviews about it and I'd heard that it was good. And I was like, OK, well, if it's good, great. You know, I love the Rocky movies. But when I watched it, I was like, this is fucking the shit. Like, it's so much better than just a sequel. Like, it's just a great concept. It's a great sports movie. It's a great boxing movie. And it's just all about character, you know? It's not about the fights, essentially. It's about the character. And it's about sort of, you know, we're following two different paths, which is kind of rocky and where he's at with his life, which is, you know, his sort of glory has come to a close. And what does that mean for him and all these people that he loves have have passed away? Um, And then this new guy and what is it to make a legacy when you're sort of living in the shadow of greatness and what does that mean and and it's all very fascinating themes and really sort of you know not to be cheesy but punches above its weight oh uh and so i highly recommend that and you know i i I did not say this lightly because you know, the Rocky films, some of them are great. There's been some great Rocky films. So for this one to be sort of near to the best one, and you can never beat the original because the original invented the template. And at the end of the day, this film is still following the template that was created. You know, so it's not quite as trailblazing, but it's still damn fucking good. So if you were sort of going, eh, don't know about that, uh, go and see it. Highly recommend. Creed. Do it. Cool. Movie review number one. Mm-hmm. I don't have a second one, but I've got some other things to talk about. But do you have any? Yeah. So, yeah. Well, I wanted to very quickly, uh, just speaking of my girlfriend's birthday, mm. say, uh, Feliz cumpleaños, mi amor, te amo. Mi reina, te amo. Which means? Uh, happy birthday, my love. Uh, happy birthday, my love, I love you. My queen, I love you. Mm. <laughs> Something like that. Don't worry, she's not listening. She well, she has been listening a little bit. Oh, she's been tuning in, and I've been catching some flack. Yeah, occasionally you for made, things that I say. said. Said appropriate comments last time. I recall about something. Did I about a girl, some girls, don't, or something? Don't don't dob me in. She might not listen to that one. <laughs> okay, I have no idea what you what you're referring to, but it's, it certainly can't be good. Um, oh, yeah. Now, I also just, I listened to last week's uh, episode, right? I yep. thought it was a very good episode, apart from the technical difficulties We've got apo- yeah, we my apo- mic. We yeah. should apologize for those right off the bat. We had some technical difficulties. The problem is we don't actually monitor what is going on. Uh, like, you know, we can see the levels, we can see, you know, that it's recording, but we don't have headphones on because they get too hot. Mm, so we didn't know that uh, my mic was crackling. It was all crackling. So we had to replace the cable. But it was a good episode. It was a real shame because I actually laughed quite a lot at quite a uh, mm. few of our... Yeah, but we ruined it. ...hilarious uh, jokes. Well, Technical you know, faults. It was, I, I listened to the whole thing. But we're back now. We've made some corrections. It should be fine. Yes. Um, but anyway, so in last week's one, uh, you um, floored me with your... Um, complete lack of astronomical knowledge. Um, right. Now you were drunk, yep. so I'll give you that. But I just wanted to just just make it real clear on this moon thing. Oh, Jesus. Night time on the moon. Yep. Yeah. So I googled it. All right. Yeah. So because I feel like maybe I didn't, I wasn't clear last last time. Uh-huh. So we experienced day when we were on the half of the Earth facing the sun. Right. Yep. Makes sense. And and night once we've spun around to the other side. Cool, got it. The same occurs on the moon. However, the difference is that it takes 28.5 days for the moon to spin around its axis. So one moon day is 28.5 Earth days. Uh Now, in a month, there's approximately 28, 30 days here on Earth. So uh, the effect is known as synchronous rotation. So a tidally locked body, being the moon takes just as long to rotate around its axis as it does for it to revolve to revolve around us so the sun so the moon is always facing us right but yeah just to, just to well thank you professor well i actually um well to boil to that down there is nighttime on the moon then there is yeah well, yeah 
<laughs> yeah, well, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's a long night. It's 28 days long. It's a long ass night. It's a long ass night. Yeah. Um, now, I did have a question for you, though. Can you name the planets? Negative. You, can you try? Uh, Saturn. Okay. Jupiter. You don't, you're not going to do it in order? No. Just, no, all right, all right. So I don't know what fucking order they are. All right. <laughs> Saturn. <laughs> yeah. Jupiter. Uh-huh. Mars. Uh-huh. Uranus. Uh huh. Venus. Uh huh. Um, uh, Pluto's not counted anymore. God damn it. There's only three that you're missing. Um, nah, that's it. Missing the three. Yeah. Uh, One of them's really easy. Yeah, nah, nah. That's it. You're on it currently. Oh, Earth. Yeah. Okay. So I've got two. Yeah. Two that I'm sure of. The there. one closest oh, to the sun? Uranus. No, you said that. Oh, did I? Yeah. But the one closest to your sun? To, closest to the sun? Uh, no. Uh, Mercury. Mercury. And then, Classic Mercury. Uh, uh, and then the one furthest from the sun now that Pluto doesn't count, Neptune. Did you say Neptune? No, Neptune. I didn't. So yeah. Mercury and Neptune. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I was down. Yeah. Mercury and Neptune. Concerning. Concerning. I feel like you should know that. Well, not really, because I'm never going to visit them. Well, it's real easy to remember. My very eager mother just showed us nine. It used to be my very eager mother just showed us nine planets, but now it's just my very eager mother just showed us nine. Mm. But that's how you remember. Well, thank you for that. I'm sure the <laughs> uh, podcast listeners appreciate going back to school. Uh, hey, man. Like, for a few minutes, yeah. You know, I'm here to, I'm here to edu- edutain. I'm here to edutain. Uh, right. Um, now, speaking of the galaxy mm-hmm. and a little galaxy far, 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 far away, away. Uh, Star Wars mm. is coming in five days, right? Which means that the next time that I talk on this podcast, I will have sat down. No, you won't. I'm going to tell you why not. Because I'm leaving on um, early Friday morning, which means we're going to have to record this on next Thursday. And Thursday night is the, is the screening. Of- no, it's Wednesday night. Oh, is it Wednesday night, yep. as in the very the early yep. morning of... Uh, Wednesday 12, so I will have seen it. So I can go. Oh, no, but there's no tickets. Well, there probably is still tickets. Mm. But yeah, Wednesday night, I will have seen this, which means, to quote old dirty bastard, I will have come like a thousand doves. That's what I would have done when I watched that film. And we'll be in a whole new era. The new Star Wars era. The new trilogy. Which is following on from the old, uh, what's six? Six tuplet or something? Something like that. Six, six, six quality. Um, so anyway, that's coming out. I'm very excited. Uh, we have talked a little bit about how it's not really Star Wars because George Lucas is not doing it. I've uh, found out a little bit more intel on that. Apparently, because he was developing... from your um, your dealings with George? Yeah, when I chatted with George on yeah. the phone. Mm. So apparently... He was always planning to sell it to Disney, but he was very torn on whether or not he was going to be directly involved with the new Star Wars films, and he felt that he could not, like, he could not do them unless he was, you know, the architect of them. Mm. And he went back and forth, apparently, for five months deliberating on that, whether or not he was going to do it, whether he was not going to do it. And the reason that he didn't do it is because it would take him essentially a decade from that time, mm. and he is 67, which means that he'd be finishing them up in se- when he was sort of 77, mm. and he was like, look, you know, my time... It's is like, ve- I've done enough. Yeah, my time is very valuable. I have spent the majority of my life on this bullshit. Uh, so, you know, I think that I just have to let it go, but it was with a heavy heart that mm. he did that. Um, and now apparently he's seen the new Star Wars, and this is his quote. I think the fans are going to love it. It's very much the kind of movie they've been looking for. Now that is the most passive-aggressive, uh, sort of backwards compliment you could say. You know, it's, it's, it's like clearly he is definitely not a fan of it. You think? Yeah, but he definitely understands that from a fan standpoint, you would be a fan of it. Mm. But he's not. See, that feeling worries it. me. That worries me that it'll suffer from CGITis and you know, well, yeah, but blockbusteritis his, but, but, and all but, that stuff. But his, like, you know, the last films he made, if the fans like it. We're fucked. You know, they, the fans like Transformers too. Yeah, but also, you know, like 
the most CGI-ish films of all time are probably his prequels. Yeah, um, for sure. But but I felt like the CGI in the prequels was nowhere near as bad as the CGI in the Hobbit, for example. You know, it was like it was like yeah, there was heaps of CGI, there was heaps of it going on. But you're in a frigging galaxy far, far away, right? You know, you need robots. You're, and, you're and not in a forest. Lasers, exactly. With some wizards. Everything's got lasers and stuff. That you know, they've got swords made of lasers. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know they've got some, laser swords. <laughs> they've got some CGI requirements. Yeah, you know, it's one of the times when you can get away with a lot of CGI. Plus, I just felt like the Star Wars CGI looked a lot better than the Hobbit CGI. The Hobbit CGI just looked like it had no weight to it, you know? Like, mm. you had these people fighting, you know, CGI people fighting other CGI monsters, and it was like, it just felt like not a real battle. that wasn't really happening. Whereas Star Wars, you know, I feel like it kept me in the reality of it. Right. Well, having rewatched those... They looked like shit? Yeah. Right. That I think if you rewatched it, you'd be like, oh, God. Well, what I watched, I watched a little bit today over your shoulder. Guy well, was re-watching. Well, that was the best one. Right. You were watching episode three. That's when the t- technology had like he'd kind of really got the sort of marriage right he'd sort of worked out the techniques to sort of feel like these people were in the scenes with all this shit whereas in the first two it was definitely felt like what the hell is going on green screen jar jars yeah everyone's looking at jar jar and if the eyelines are not at all matching up Mm. and uh boy jar jar binks was really annoying Mm, was he he really was he was a real piece of work yeah um but i did look into also you know what What you you mentioned last week uh the uh basically darth binks darth binks the idea that jar jar could be a sith lord and not just a sith lord but a a A very cunning and intelligent one that has you know played everybody he's played everyone by being this bumbling doofus but really he's setting up you know all this stuff uh, and you know he could be a bad guy, and it could be revealed that, that was what was going to happen. And there's this little video, and we're, we should post a link to it. Yeah. Um, where you know that goes through beat by beat, so you know, kind of validating this argument. And I thought it was interesting. I'm not really sure that it's true, but one of the most interesting things was Ahmed Best, who played Jar Jar Binks, tweeted after seeing this kind of thing. Oh, finally, people were starting to get it. Uh, no matter how long ago, you know, the film was, mm. hashtag The Phantom Menace. Mm. Then he posted a script, like the front page of a script, which obviously he was sent, which was dated in like 2000, and it was called Episode 2, Star Wars Episode 2, The Adventures of Jar Jar Binks. Is he allowed to do that? Um, no, probably not. But it's probably also like George Lucas probably don't really care now. However, if you posted what was in the content, Yeah, but his the- legal team might give a shit. Maybe. And the I, fucking, I mean, the I people, think, the people down at Disney who now own the rights might give a shit. I think the real issue would be... He's going to get dragged over the coals, man. Uh, no, I don't think so. I just don't think they care. I think that the real problem would have been if he'd sent, like, he'd uploaded the, the old script. Mm. That would have brought a shit storm down. Mm. But, you know, there's this whole idea that also, you know, essentially everyone hated The Phantom Menace so, so much back in sort of 99 when it came out. They were so anti it that it scared George Lucas. It rattled him to, to the point where he was like, okay, I set up this thing as a major character. I'm completely reneging on that and any plans I had for him. And he's just going to be in a handful of scenes. And that's what happened. And you do have to wonder if all that backlash completely changed the future Jar Jar Binks Sith Lord. Mm. Hey, stranger things have happened. Mm. It also would have made his character a lot fucking more interesting, mm. you know, if it had turned out that he was a bad guy. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, again, you could also just go on to say, look, uh, no, he was just fucking annoying. He mm. was just a fucking annoying, like, kind of... Comedic com- relief. Comedic relief, and he was going to be in the other two, and then, you know, George Lucas just realized that the fans did not consider him funny, uh, which he wasn't, really, unless you're a little kid. Um, but I also do think it's interesting, because this is the first film that is essentially a sequel to something that was started 40 years ago that is not a reboot, that is not a reimagining... And that has the same characters. Like, just think about that for a second. It's got the same characters that were in it 40 years ago. The same people playing them. That's fucking nuts. In a lifetime, you could only ever see one of these types of sequels if they were to ever happen again, which they probably won't. I mean, can you imagine in 40 years them going, let's get Mark Wahlberg to be in Transformers, like, 10 
or let's get Shia LaBeouf in to to be in the new Transformers that we're rebooting forty years later. Mm. It, it would never happen. Well, they'll probably do that. I don't think they'll do Transformers, that. Transformers, too much of a cash cow. The idiots uh, like it. It's timeless. <laughs> Transformers are timeless. Harley said it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's timeless in the sense that the idiots will always like it. Yeah. CGI-tis, can't go wrong. Well, Blockbuster yeah. itis just give them pretty shit to look at and they'll pay. Well, I will just... So I'm kind of fascinated by that aspect of it. But as we said, it's not the real Star Wars. It's just Star Wars fan fiction. Mm. Made for the fans. I am a fan. I'm going to enjoy it. I'm thinking of going dressed up. My girlfriend has just procured herself a slave layer outfit. Nice. Oh, yeah. Uh, I hope that's the first time you've had a girlfriend with a slave layer outfit. It is the first time. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> so that's pretty sweet. So I guess I won't be getting any sleep on uh, Wednesday night <laughs> 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 slash Thursday morning when you guys come back at 4 a.m. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, well, that's good. <laughs> 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 Good. Hey, little update on my tooth. Yep. Uh, you know how I said I thought all the stuff inside the tooth was coming out? Yep. It was just a piece of salami. <laughs> I just got it out then. It was a little piece of salami. False alarm, guys. False salami. <laughs> <laughs> I see what you did there. Yeah. yeah it was good. Um, uh, yeah, it just came out right then and, and turned out it wasn't a piece of my flesh. It was uh, just a little bit of salami. So just I'm, I'm salami p- pretty happy about that. That means I can postpone going to the dentist for another four or five weeks. Okay. Uh, have you got any uh, anything else? Yeah. So what do we got here? Um, uh, just, let's give me one second here. Oh, we couldn't shoot our poem. So we were going to shoot my poem, Gravity. We were yeah. going to film that the other day on last Tuesday. And we had the plan all, we had the sort of the shoot all planned. We had a soundie. We had uh, uh, our man, uh, Blair Martin, was going to come along. Mm-hmm, Sorry mm-hmm. again, Blair, for forgetting your last name yeah. last week. Apologies. Um, we had a soundie. We had Blair was going to come along help us out. Guy had to uh, tell somebody at work that he couldn't swap until That's later right. on because yep. he had postponed a swap with, with somebody took, at work. Took two hours off my working, uh, my week. 30 hours a week. Yeah, yep. and, uh, and then we couldn't do my poem about religion due to an act of God. Yeah. The wind. Just I- Ironically. Yeah, it was the wind. It was the weather. It was just a bit shit. Uh, yeah. And also we're having this issue because we talked about sort of upgrading our camera with a sort of hacking it. And we're waiting on a card that can read the super high-speed cards that um, you put in the camera to record at this high data rate, basically. And I've been fucked around by, uh, I think they're called... What's the name? Uh, Warehouse One, I think their name is. And basically, I so I, I ordered it online. Uh, you know, they say shipping takes sort of one to three days. Four days later, I sort of sent an email. Didn't get a reply. Two days later, I gave them a call and I was like, hey, so... Um, what's going on with this thing? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, we'll look into it. Then sort of half an hour after that, I got an email and they were like, uh, yeah, so it turns out that's just not coming. They don't have that anymore. And I was like, well, wh- it said my order had been processed and in stock and was being shipped. And they're like, <laughs> yeah, just kidding. jokes, jokes. Um, and I was like, okay, so what happens now? And they're like, oh, well, you can just get the newer version of it. So you just need to send an email to confirm that. And I was like, okay. So I sent an email to confirm that. Another four days later, haven't heard anything. Tried calling them today. Uh, they say they're open. Uh, no answer on their phones. Uh, no reply to my email. Uh, Warehouse One. So if you are thinking of getting something from Warehouse One, just maybe Refrain. think again because they've been fucking terrible. So essentially been waiting two weeks for this card reader to come and we still haven't got it. And I'm sincerely hoping it comes by next week. And that's, well, that's even so if I. it's shift. So am I because we were potentially talking about filming maybe this Tuesday yeah. um, instead. So, But we need the cards because the footage, uh, we're recording such uh, so large amounts of data that we need to transfer from the camera, from the cards. We need to empty out the cards onto the computer, and we can't do that without the card reader. So on location, in situ, we need to be transferring onto a laptop, and we can't without these damn cards. So, so yeah, now weird. they're costing us. They're costing us uh, yep. time and, and YouTube views and exactly. world-conquering. I mean, I only get 80 years, man, and they're taking some of it. Exactly. What, 80? 
You hope, I thought you were hoping for way more. Well, I'm, you, 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 you know, you quoted I'm aiming me for 150. A no, I said 100. Oh, I'm pretty sure that you I were never like, said 150. There's not been a human in the history of <laughs> fucking I'm pretty sure Earth said, okay, that's lived to 150, you, unless you believe the Bible. You might have said 120. <laughs> no, 100, man. I always was aiming for 100. All uh, right. I'm always pre- 100. I'm like, sure I feel like that's a very reasonable thing to aim for. Right, right. 100. Oh, no, I'd be disappointed with 80. If I died at 80, I'd be, I'd be kicking myself. Yeah. Um, so Hundy, Hundy bro. Right, right. Okay. And, and also we are hopefully, we are getting, we're about to receive a new cut, uh, of, uh, what we filmed on, um, the previous Tuesday, the previous yeah. Tuesday, I think it was, uh, from our editor Craig and we're going to see, we're going to have a little look at that, have some notes and hopefully that's going to be coming out. That's supposed to be coming to us today. That's our next skit known as not wanking. Yep. And the hashtag is going to be hashtag not wanking. Brilliant. And it is quite, I feel like that's quite marketable. Yeah. Cause you can use that for a lot of different jokes about where you're very obviously wanking. Yeah. I said, looking forward to hashtag not wanking on Saturday. No promises for Sunday, though. (laughs) 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 Fucking where's my support? Where's my fucking backup? Nothing wrong with that. Hey, I clicked like. This is a funny tweet. I clicked like. (laughs) You know, I I gave it the favorite. (laughs) But it was more, it was out of support. Come on, that's good. Not respect. That's all right. (laughs) It's passable. It was all right. It was all right. It was all right as a tweet. Um, my speaking of poems, my the gravity got um shared on a redneck Australian page called Aussie uh, Aussie Atheist Patriot or Atheist Aussie Patriot. Yeah, he he shared my uh, poem, which was cool because he's got nineteen thousand followers. Mm. But like these guys are like pro gun, you know, like Fucking anti like anti jobs. anti Muslim pro. Gun, like, you know, like, redneck, like, dumbasses, basically. They're, um, they're basically a bunch of alternate atheist terrorists. Well, well, they're just, they're just dumb people who happen to be right about God, um, <laughs> <laughs> basically. You know, but they're, you know, they're all discrimination against Muslims, and they're posting all these, like, Muslim memes and shit, and there's my face. <laughs> <laughs> there's my face. But, you know, I mean, I'm not anti-Muslim in any way. I'm, I'm anti-Islam as much as I'm anti-any other religion. Okay, well... <laughs> Good. Uh, so I did also just want to mention, I did, uh, now, basically what happens on Twitter is lots of people spam you, and they, they follow you, and they're hoping for a follow back, and they're hoping that you'll look at their shit. Mm, that's all Twitter is. It can be. Well, no, not really. If Do you, you know if how you, many messages the zombie holocaust Twitter has? It has, like, no shit, like, like I don't know, thousands, maybe even tens of thousands of messages, mm. and you can't even read your messages because they are they're all just hey hi hi zombie holocaust movie thanks for the follow mm. check out my shit mm. you know mm-hmm. like they're not and it's all automated it's a bot it's a it's an automatic yeah. response thing that they do so if you like i used to send a message i sent this message to the guys from fail army because mm. they put me on their website because I made them this like promotional photo, which they liked, and um, and they put it on the website with this all this little spiel about me, and then I was trying to get in touch with them, and they used to reply to me on Twitter, and then one day they they stopped, and I think what happened is it was about the time that the spam bot revolution happened. And <laughs> yeah. Now Twitter's just fucked. You can't no, get in touch with anybody directly apart from tweeting them. Yeah just follow people actual people and you don't get involved but anyway someone i got sort of tweeted by you know like a filmmaking company or a film and out of curiosity i clicked through to them and i watched their short film which is this amazing time travel movie called recursion and it's uh quite similar to my classic uh, do scientists dream of electric toasters? Which you can watch at guypigden.com, if I'm not mistaken. That's true, but made much better, much higher quality, with much better everything, and is just like basically like an excellently edited, acted, and awesome short film, which apparently has won heaps of awards and now it's online. Um, but I highly, if you like time travel movies, which I do, uh, I highly recommend checking it out. Uh, I think it's at recursion or at recursion movie. But if you just type in recursion to Twitter, uh, you'll find it. Um, And the funny thing was I watched it right and I sent them a direct message and was like, hey, guys, fucking awesome film, like super inspiring, just really well done, like really blew my mind, like great. And then I got a 
automatic spam bot message from him the next day that said, Hey guy, uh, you know, thanks for the follow. Check out our film Recursion. Yeah. And I was like, you dipshits. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's a problem. You, I haven't set one of those up for Zombie no, Holocaust. There yeah. isn't one of those on Zombie Holocaust, yeah. but I probably should because I'm sure it works. It does work to a degree for sure. Um, uh, also now, also what you might not know is Adam Sandler released his latest feature film directly to netflix called the ridiculous six which is basically you know a sort of a comedy western um which is by all accounts quite shit have you seen it no i've just read some reviews i will probably watch it well fuck the reviewers man remember what they said about zombie holocaust no they said it was three three to four stars well some of them did now uh this is like what about our, our mate from tv3 fucking Daniel Ratchet. Yeah, Daniel Rutledge. Daniel Ra- Radcliffe. I will remember that <laughs> name. Daniel Rutledge. For all eternity. You're on the list, Dan, if you're listening, mate. It's weird because I've never really considered being violent towards anyone. It's not really in my nature. But I have seriously debated in my head, should I just punch him in the face? If I, like, literally, if I see him face to face... Should I just punch him in the face well, the thing and go, ab- that was for zombie holocaust? And that's it. Like, you know, like, what are going to be the repercussions? I've sort of, I've, 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 I've went through it in my head. Mm. Like, like one, he Assault could- Assault charge. One, he could punch me back and mm. I'd lose. There, there's a risk of that. I think mm. that's unlikely. Well, not if you get him good the first that's time. That's what I'm saying. It's, I'll get him a good one. No mm. doubt about it. I'll get him a, I'll get him a doozy. Well, nobody that's ex- five years of anger and resentment yeah. balled into one fist. Yeah. And, throwing and with all my might. Also, nobody expects a left. Exa- Everyone expects a right. Right. That's true. You're left-handed. Exactly. Guy's left-handed. So it'd be completely unprepared. So the real risk is an assault charge. What would happen from that? I would probably pay, you know, maybe a, a couple of hundred dollars compensation, and I'd have to do some community work. No, it depends what happens. But if you like smashed out his teeth and got caught, yeah, that's, I think you that, could you could get some. I mean, you can still go to jail just for punching somebody once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, like, based on my record, I have no criminal record. Right, I have so a good history. I have great it. references. Yeah, I would definitely not go to jail. I would yeah. definitely get community service. But but then they'll listen to this podcast uh, yeah. and it'll be premeditated. If they listen to this podcast. Podcast, this that will put a throw a spanner yeah, in the works. Yeah, premeditated assault. But That's of course, gonna change it. What I would do is delete this podcast. Right. Um, you know, but if I'd punched him, the first thing I'd do is drive home and delete this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. See, the thing is that we could actually potentially find this guy because he travels. I mean, like he obviously well, he's a film reviewer, right? Well, there's, yeah, he's there's, in yeah. Auckland. Yep, he's reviewing films. We go to film events. We're in the film industry. Yeah. Th- well, there's no doubt that at some event, at some point in the future, we are both going to be there, and it is not that unlikely that I will just bump into him face to face. Um. So you know, so there's so there's that's the worst. That but but also you'd get kind of a. A good reputation. Because if you're a critic and you know that this very mellow dude that has never ever been violent in his yeah, whole life. Yeah, but nobody's going to know that you're mellow. They're going to, because this is going to be the first time they hear of you. <laughs> yeah. So they're going to say, oh, he's a violent dude. <laughs> well, either way. The first way, thing they heard about you was you assaulting somebody, uh, assaulting a journalist at a Christmas party or something. Either way, <laughs> they will be like, shit. Like, as much as I hate this new film he's made. I don't want to put myself in in actual <laughs> physical jeopardy here. He and he's be, a loose fucking cannon. He's a psychopath. So I'm definitely going to give this an extra star. So I feel like, and also just as a legacy thing, that you punched out some motherfucker that I gave think, you one star. I think that's more likely. You're more likely, like, I don't think that'll affect the, the future reviews, really. Right. If anything, it might have the opposite effect. Yeah. You know, because the, they'll, the be like, they'll be like, the reviewers banded together. You can't just punch us. Well, yeah, exactly. They'll say, like, you you know, I will not be oppressed by your violence, you fucking uncouth barbarian. Yeah. You know, they'll say, we're going to, you know, freedom of speech, man. Um, and they'll just shit all over whatever you're doing next. Mm, um, mm, mm. And you'll read those reviews from jail. Mm. Um from community service. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, well, what do you think as a course of action? Oh, I think you should knock the cunt the fuck out. <laughs> like, I'll be right there. I'll be right there. Egging you on, but keeping myself legally <laughs> clean. <laughs> legally separated from any... Uh, Consequences. Uh, yes. Ramifications. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't, I don't like the guy either. But I'm not going to jail for him. But if I could pick one guy... To punch? Well, oh, look, yeah. mate. 
that's the that's the deal. Um, fucking celebrity. Um, what's Boxer, it called? Oh yeah, celebrity fight for life. Yeah, celebrity fight for life. The um, you know, where celebrities fight each other uh, yeah, for charity yeah, yeah. in the boxing ring. Yeah. But the thing is, you won't have the element of surprise there. No. <laughs> he might out-train you. Well, that's the thing. If he, like, I'd be worried about reach, you know, because yeah. uh, they've just, uh, they had a fight for life well, thing. I do assume that he's a spindly little nerd. Or with, with an inferiority or, complex. Or morbidly obese. Yeah. He's we can actually see him. I'm, he's on TV, I think. Is he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, ah, yeah. look. So, you know, but, you know, there's the thing is the bachelor, Art Green, just won a max, uh, uh, a boxing match against an all black. And, you know, obviously the, the bachelor is a fit dude, but you would probably back the all black. However... He had the height and the reach. Mm. It's all about the reach, man. If you can't get in there and you're just getting jabbed the hell out of, that's it. You mm. couldn't for you. Mm. Um, so, but you know, I'm sure everyone hoped and thought the Bachelor was going to lose. Mm. Now, I did just want to bring up the Bachelor. Okay, I'm ready um, because I've got beef. I've got podcast beef with Will Fleming. Oh shit! Our best mate. Our formerly best, best mate, uh-huh. who still hasn't uploaded our podcast. Yeah. Right? He still hasn't uploaded our podcast. He did an interview with us. My Kiwi Life. Check it out. It's a good podcast. However, we did a podcast. We were promised that we'd be first. We, we, you're up first, guys. Bring in the heavy We're going to open the new season with, that, with the best with, content. With, with hilarity. Uh, however, that did not happen. He's like, oh, no, look, it's actually going to be some point later. I was okay with that. I was totally cool with that, and he's been having, like, basically, he's been having, like, he's had this sort of alt, really interesting entrepreneur on, he's had this uh, scientist who's talking about fat loss, really interesting things, and I'm like, you know what, we're just a couple of filmmakers, I kind of accept that these people are more interesting, however, he made the cardinal sin on the last one, because who did he have on? The fucking Bachelor. Right. Now, I get it, right? Way more people want to hear from The Bachelor than want to hear from Guy and Harley. But you are now spitting in the face of art- artists, of creatives, because you're saying that a reality show doofus who literally just lucked into something because he was kind of good looking and he had abs, uh, who has nothing clever to say, who has no point of view on anything. Did he... Was he boring? I don't know. I haven't listened to it yet. Ah, well... <laughs> hey, let me finish. Uh, who is the epitome of what is wrong with society, which is a guy who is now famous because he was in a reality show about nothing, which made us all stupider. Uh, you know, that is his legacy. Uh, until he starts a Art Green Save the Kids thing... Or until he releases, you know, the a Pulitzer Prize piece of journalism or invents a cure for cancer or just something, anything except being pretty on TV in a shitty reality TV show. Uh, you cannot say that uh, that is a more worthy person to be on than a couple of creatives, a couple of artists, a couple of filmmakers uh, who are actually legitimately trying to do something in the world. You fucked up, Will. Will. You fucked up, buddy. So we might just have to cancel that barbecue. <laughs> yeah, no barbecue for the, you. The, the podcast barbecue because we podcast friends barbecue we, cancel. Yeah, we'll cancel that because I am officially insulted. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you should check out his podcast. It's very good. Uh, My Kiwi Life. My Kiwi Life. Check that out. But well, we got beef, bro. I am really hoping that the longer he leaves it. The more, the more views he's going to have, the, the more followers he's hey, going to have. That's a good point. You know, so, so the very first episode, I'm sure, has the least views or some of the lower end. Or maybe, either have the least or the most. Or the mo- it depends if people click on the latest one or they click on the first one. And mm. I think most people would click on the latest mm. one. I personally would click on the latest episode of a podcast, mm. not the very first one, mm. unless I really loved it and wanted to like go through the entire back catalogue or something. The mother flipping bachelor. Um, We're losing out to, what's that name of that diet? Oh, who cares? They they, the they paleo s- diet. Yeah, yeah. We're lo- we we've lost to the paleo diet. It does he do the paleo diet? Yeah, I think so. Right. And in fact, there was some like article I read about like they celebrated like the the you know the couple you know Art and the other guy they celebrated with like a paleo fucking birthday cake or some right. bullshit. Well, I'm some gonna, ridiculous bullshit. I'm gonna tell you something about the paleo diet. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
It is uh, meat industry propaganda. That's what it is. <laughs> okay, it's a way to encourage people to eat more meat, um, and that's you know that's the idea, and it's perfect. It's perfect. Hey man, eat what the cavemen ate. Look, motherfuckers, the cavemen didn't eat fucking cows. The cavemen you know? couldn't read. <laughs> they didn't know about the diet. <laughs> <laughs> word diet in their vocabulary it was just so, a bunch of grunts they were out raping women 24 7 they were raping the cows and eating the women <laughs> <laughs> no so look 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 it is meat industry propaganda because like there's no way that you can have an actual authentic paleo diet because what you're going to do is you can eat a whole bunch of meat and you can eat a whole bunch of vegetables and that's great but what about all the bugs what about all the fucking everything else that they ate that they could get their hands on? What about, you know, like they slurped the marrow out of the bones because it was, high, it was high in like fucking fat and nutrients and shit, mm. you know? And yeah, they ate any bug they could get their hand on. Shove you know, it in their mouth. Exactly. They ate all Ugh. of the stuff. And so as a result, they weren't just eating meat and veg. They were, they were getting nutrients from a big variety of places. Fucking chew on some leaves and shit. Well, yeah, they were chewing on whatever edible leaves they could find. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, but they were... Eating, so they were eating snakes and they were eating bugs and they were eating, you know, like red meat and white meat and they were eating all these different things as well as all this wide variety of like fruit and vegetables, whatever they could find in their region, yeah. you know. And so now you got nowadays, it's like, oh, yeah, I just I don't eat peanuts because it's a, it's a legume and it's, it's, <laughs> no, it's not. It, it's like, man, shut the fuck up. If you were a paleolithic man, you would eat that peanut. You know, so, you would eat that potato. You would find a way to make that. You know, I'm sure. Like they, they actually found um, evidence recently that uh, of Paleolithic era humans eating uh, porridge, which they right. had, I guess, yeah, heated yeah. up somehow. Yeah. You know, like, and that you know, porridge is not part of the paleo diet. So it's because the paleo diet's a lot of shit. So Art Green, if you're such a big hero, if you're such a big man, why don't you start eating bugs? Why don't you start chowing down some fucking spiders that you find a fucking fly in your house and shit? That's a true paleo diet. Otherwise, don't come to me with your abs and your handsome face and your fucking success after your television show. Get that shit out of here. I tell you what, Art. <laughs> What's his name? Yeah, Art. Art. I think so. Art Green. I think. Look, I could be making that name. Well, up. look, Art. <laughs> I challenge you to the next celebrity fight for life. <laughs> Officially. <laughs> Harley Neville versus Art Green. You and me, kid. I'm gonna teach you a thing or two. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you some manners. I'll teach you about teach you about the paleo paleo diet. Teach you about getting in front of us of the podcast queue for yeah. Will Fleming's show, My Kiwi Life. I'm on the fucking beer and pizza diet, motherfucker. <laughs> Look, to be I honest, get more energy than you do. If he beat an All Black, he's not gonna have too much trouble with you. Wow, he's not gonna have too much trouble negotiating. What happened to my backup? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just warning you. I'm pre-warning you. No, look, I look. I'll tell you something. I've fantasized many times about going on um, Celebrity Fight for Life. Well, look, it would be hysterical just in the idea would, that you're I, so here. I would wear the smallest yeah. shorts I could find. Yeah. I would not manscape. Yeah. I wouldn't shave. Yeah. I would just look it would like be absolute it, shit. It would and be I'll, a spectacular sight. Now I would do my best to win. Yeah. But when I got knocked the fuck out. That that would be like worth it for the publicity. Yeah. That that would you, you know you'd be like oh the everyman that challenged fucking yeah. you know Art Green Art Green champion boxer against the All Black. Yeah. I always imagined that I would fight either either Jason Gunn. <laughs> <laughs> fair fight. He's that's got it a, coming. He's got it coming. It's a fair fight at least. <laughs> or um, that very famous All Black. That's very pretty. What's his name? Oh, Sonny Bill Williams. Sonny Bill Williams. Yeah, yeah. Or him. You know, <laughs> that, that would be a, a, a hysterical mismatch <laughs> of physicality. Uh, you know, of aesthetic physicality. Well, that, yeah, but that's the thing. He would underestimate me, wouldn't he? <laughs> well, he would underestimate. Every, me. Everyone would definitely underestimate. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So I, I think I stand a chance. I don't think you stand a chance. <laughs> Uh, but I would one punch knocked out <laughs> and crying publicly. Oh, I would, but I would love to see it. I would just love to see you t disrobe. You know, you take off your boxer's robe, and this uh, audible gasp yeah. from the audience go. 
<laughs> what the fuck? Is yeah. He's so hairy. <laughs> like, it would, like, legitimately be, like, quite... It would definitely create a news story in just how yeah. hairy... I'd become a meme. Yeah, you would definitely become Guaranteed. a meme. Guaranteed. <laughs> I would become a meme of some description. <laughs> yeah, like, hairy, um, hairy man knocked out. Sonny Bill Williams versus Hairy Ball... <laughs> <laughs> hairy Balls Wilson. <laughs> <laughs> some <Something> like <that. laughs> Harry, Harry Balls Harley. Yeah, yeah. Sonny Bill Williams, Harry Balls Neville. Yeah, Harry I don't know. Ball, Harry Balls Neville. <laughs> Harry Back Neville. Yeah. Classic. Uh, so, yeah. So, anyway, Sonny, if you're fucking listening. <laughs> no, we can't call out him. <laughs> I'm calling out both of them. Sonny, you're in this too. What kind of name is Sonny anyway? <laughs> fucking. Listen, Sonny. You'll be moony when I'm done with you because it'll be night time for you, buddy. You'll be asleep. You heard me. <laughs> See, that is just as bad as whatever the joke that I did way back when. That, that is no, just... yours was a tweet. It was way worse. <laughs> I'll tell you something. Listen, Sonny, you'll be moony. <laughs> it's genius. <laughs> it's genius. <laughs> because you'll be asleep. It's at night time. <laughs> Wait, what, did you just get it or something? No, no, I'm just laughing at how bad that is. <laughs> how much of a reach that is. This is, this is good shit. This is good shit. <laughs> write it down, write it down, put it in a skit. Oh, tears, tears of laughter. <laughs> tears of misery. <laughs> All right, well, is that us? <laughs> we, we got anything else? I don't know, you got, you got anything else? No, that, that's really, that's all I wanted to talk about. All right, all right, cool. We'll keep it short this week, only an hour ten. <laughs> all right. <laughs> well, I also, I guess <laughs> we kind of got sidetracked with the whole Art Green thing. Mm. But, you know, Adam Sandler's released this film on Netflix. It's the first kind of big star just releasing a film just on Netflix, mm. you know? And it's this kind of thing is the idea is because Netflix said, that, like, everyone was like, why do you want a shitty Adam Sandler movie? And they were like, um, actually... Adam Sandler movies are the most popular movies on Netflix. Mm. Um, And so it's this idea that, okay, well, where are people, like, is this the place where comedy legends go to die? Like, in the same way that in New Zealand, where celebrities go to die is uh, morning breakfast radio. That's where all our sort of former celebrities or former Mm. people that were doing something interesting, you know, they all just become radio DJs at some point in their life. Uh, You know, not naming any names. Uh, Mikey, uh, Mikey news, Newsboy, Newsboy. Um, uh, Mike Simon, Simon Barnett, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they all sort of kind of go there eventually. And look, I hope that we get go on Off the radio. That, yeah. yeah, I'd love to go on the radio mm. in the mornings. And we can talk. I just don't think I can handle the morning, though. Well, look, if we were on the radio in the morning, the problem is our strength is that we are unrestrained. Yeah. You know, whereas in the morning, you've got to be like, hey, so like, check out this funny story about my porridge. Yeah. You know, I found a bug in my porridge today and it was really hilarious. Yeah. And also, you know, trying to come up with like five days worth of content. Yeah. It's impossible. Yeah, well, that's why you end up doing like shitty like interviews and dumb like well, there's, dumb yeah. gags where you like make people date on on air live or you yeah. know that type of thing or have interview the bachelor. Mm. Um, I mean, like you and I str- <laughs> Ooh, jab. Um, <laughs> um, you and I struggle. Uh, well, we don't really struggle, but like we do it one one a week. And we, and we do, we do we struggle. Would, we would not do two a week. No, we would definitely not do. And two. we used to do a, a live radio show on Radio Ponsonby that yeah. was two hours a week, and that had musical interludes. Um, so and, and it was it was good. It was great, and it was cool that we were on the radio. But uh, we really kind of struggled for that second hour, or basically the last oh, thirty minutes. Just anything, really. We were just struggling. Well, towards the end, we gave up because we were like, we were like, yeah, we're just too busy for this shit. And we can't think of yeah. enough. We can't fill an hour or two hours a week. Well, it's definitely not two hours a week. But also, I think that's the other thing is like, why does Shortland Street suck? It's because it's on five times a week, every week, for years and years and years. Uh, my name's Harley Neville, and I'd just like to um, disassociate myself from, from that Guy comment. Pigton's comments because I would love to act on Shortland Street, and I think it's an exceptional show. Oh, um, come on, so bro. So I'm eager and keen uh, to get an audition, and I would love the opportunity to, to work for Look, you if you're listening. people on Shortland Street acknowledge that Shortland Street is not exactly breaking bad. Not publicly, you fool. It's not breaking bad, Harley. Well, no, it's not breaking <laughs> bad. It's breaking television. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, as in broken. Yeah, as in it's bad television. No, no. <laughs> Stop sucking me into this. <laughs> I'd love, I love Shaw and Street, and I'd love to be on it. But that's the thing is, like, you know, people go, well, why is this? That that is my end game, by the way. Why I is do, this? <laughs> I want to be a regular on Shaw and Street. Well, look, it, I think that's a that's an achievable end game, an attainable end game <laughs> for sure. For I, sure, I want to retire as to uh, uh, like a twenty year regular on Shaw and Street. Twenty year regular on Shaw and Street. That was, I, I could handle that. I used to have you know aspirations of being a big star in Hollywood. No, uh, nowadays shorties. I'm pretty happy with shorties. Happy if with I could shorties. get shorties, I'm fucking stoked. Yeah. Um, well, that's the thing, but that's why it is, and that's why radio kind of suffers the same fate. Morning radio, uh, anything that you have to kind of just thrash the hell out of, essentially like fifty weeks a year, uh, it's not going to work. It's, it's not going to well, be consistently great. Well, yeah, it's, it's just difficult to come up with that many storylines. Yeah, you know, like that are fresh. You know, how can you do it? But I mean, they seem to have done it. I admire them. I think it's great that they've done that. What? Who? The writers of Shaw and Street. Oh, you know, about radio. No, no, no. The writers of Shaw and Street that they've yeah. managed to make it last for so long and still be so insanely popular. That's true. You know, like that's quite an achievement. That's very commendable. I guess you can't argue with popularity. Mm. But anyway, you know, this Netflix model, uh, you know, is this what we're going to see is essentially like, you know, you have your sort of peak where you're in the theaters where people are seeing you in the movies. And we all used to go see Adam Sandler films. And then you kind of go into your decline where you're sort of losing those people through, you know, a series of bad films or just getting old or just people kind of being used to your shtick. You know, everyone's got a shtick, mm. right? Everyone's got a thing, especially comedians, which, mm. like, this is why you're funny. Mm. This is what you do really well that mm. makes you unique and interesting. But at the same token, that is also the thing that, at a certain point, everyone just goes, nah, sick of it. What is the next thing? What's mm. the new thing? Mm. And so I feel like, you know, this could be, I guess, the c- sort of the big heavyweight movie star graveyard mm. is sort of the nostalgia, Netflix nostalgia, mm. where they just make things on Netflix and, you know, they do kind of do okay because, you know, there's still people that go, look, I'm not going to now pay, you know, like mm. me personally, I wouldn't go pay to see an Adam Sandler film anymore, but mm. I certainly did for a 10 year period. Yeah. Um, well, that fella from Talladega Nights will be going there soon then. Will Ferrell. Yeah. Well, he's still making pretty good stuff. Yeah, but his shtick, I'm done with his shtick. You're done with his shtick. Yeah. You're done with the Will Ferrell shtick. What's our shtick? Oh, wanking jokes? <laughs> Wank- wankthologies? <laughs> um, being being in our 30s and still being making the same stuff we made when we were 20? In our, in our, in our we're 18? Er, yeah, being in our early 30s and not progressing from our early 20s. What was that? What was that? Artistic? Um, We've co- reached the end of our artistic vocabulary. That's the, what I was looking for. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, to be honest, we are trying to branch out older mm. and you know the, the sort of the movies that we want to make are sort of i think sort of different i'd, I'd like to talk about older for a wee second okay guy showed me uh last night sex scene uh, a, a great scene um, <laughs> a great scene <laughs> you got a masterpiece <laughs> it was a masterpiece um he showed angie and i uh and we were both genuinely laughing and this is ungraded you know, ungraded, no music, no, you know, not yeah. the final cut, you know, all that stuff. And uh, it was really good. It was a really hilarious and original scene. Mm. Um, genuinely hilarious and genuinely original. And uh, it was looking great. Like, I think that, I think that, um, I think the whole movie is looking really good. Mm. I've, I've haven't seen any cringeworthy moments. This is our second film, Older the Movie, yep. which you can find um, a trailer for it by searching Pigville on YouTube. Pigville, Older, you'll find it. Um, and, uh, yeah, like, but that scene in particular seemed sort of particularly strong because it showed like mm. some good comedy in there. Um, yeah. That uh, we hadn't done. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was some good shit. It was, it was, it was really good. Well, yeah, I think that's an interesting. A good thing. combination of comedy and nudity, <laughs> which is. <laughs> That's the way you know when you're into a winner. If you can get the perfect mix if you can, of comedy if you, and nudity, if you can have a wank laugh, <laughs> then you know, you know, you know, you're doing you're something on right. The right track. A wank laugh. A wank laugh. Uh, I did, however, <laughs> yeah. see the top, not the end, yeah. uh, the bottom, I guess, the bottom inch yeah. of Guy's penis. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when I say the bottom, I mean, you know, the bit attached at the base. I saw the yeah. base of Guy's penis. So, from the pelvis to the start of the penis. Oh, all right. Steady on, doctor. 
<laughs> is what you, you know saw. your anatomy old, <laughs> like a Dr. Pigden um, you're steady on mate we saw the first inch of uh, Guy's penis yeah um, uh, so there was only another inch to follow <laughs> yeah, oh, there, was, there was one extra inch <laughs> yeah, was, well look I had so a, I saw half of it I, I, I'll say two things about that scene I had a debate with my girlfriend about she was like well where's where's the rest of your penis and I was like it's inside yeah it's in the t- it's in her mm. it's a, and then I showed her a a uh, a sort of I'm, I showed her a diagram yeah like I and we'll I'll post the picture online all right it's a diag- did you draw it yeah, yeah like so I basically put a pin up yeah where the penis was going in to prove that the penis would be in yeah. at that point you know yeah. she was like well what, is the penis not gonna be in I was like no it's definitely in yeah it's not all the way in yeah it's definitely in yeah yeah um, solo la punta which so, means just the tip just the tip so I was like yeah no it, it's in and here's why and so we'll we'll post that photo okay. with this um, as, a, as a comment underneath yes um but you know like for me uh i always get excited by whenever i think that i've done something that hasn't been done before Mm. and you know there's a couple of moments in the zombie film where i was like this hasn't been done before this is fucking cool Mm. and same with older is there's a couple of scenes where i've like no one's ever done this like talked about this or made this type of joke or whatever it is like no one's really replicated this idea in this way before and that's when you kind of as a as a storyteller as someone who is not the bachelor uh, on the paleo diet making millions of dollars from swanning around looking handsome Mm. you get excited because you're telling stories in a new and innovative way and so that that scene to me i was just excited because i was like fuck yeah i don't think anyone has quite seen this you Mm. know before and that's great anytime you can sit down you know think about the history of film think about how many films are coming out every year you know thousands. every five minutes like yeah. like literally if you were to look at the amount of films coming out if you were to break it down to every five minutes uh, there'd be like how many 10 15 20 100? possibly but certainly thousands upon thousands of films a year for the last hundred years and if you can say, you know, pretty conclusively that, you know, you're doing something, at least a scene or a couple of scenes that, you know, no one has probably really seen before. Well, that's fucking good shit. Hmm. Yeah. Well, you did that. I think so far it's looking that good. Um, okay. So I think it was time we wrapped up this show. Yes. Because we are at that time. Mm-hmm. I just want to say, I do feel like the show gets better as it goes, which is a shame because at the hour twenty mark, everybody's dropped out. <laughs> but it's actually is it, this, is when the, this is when the gold comes out, falling off because the, like the, the gin and tonics have kicked in. Yeah, that's true. Um, so that we need to get drunk. Uh, we need to drunk casts more often. Basically, <laughs> the solution is that we need to get drunk prior to filming the podcast yeah. every single time. Mm, mm. Hey, it's possible. Mm. That's an achievable goal. All right, so we're all done? Yeah, we're all done. Okay, we're going to end on Neam Hegarty's new song. Forgotten uh, Songs. Laura Palmer, Forgotten Songs. So thank you very much for listening. Make sure you go buy our movie for Christmas, I Spelled Zombie Holocaust, and we'll see you next week. Great stocking stuffer. See you later. You've been listening to the Guy and Harley podcast, proudly brought to you by Pigville Productions. Laugh it up, fuzzball.